Hi, my name's John. I've been told by the wife and one of the two other people who informed us that I've got to change my name from Bastard John to Jory John or John the Jory, which is fair enough. It's not that I'm a bastard, just I seem to use the word quite a lot when things go wrong. I mean, when I drop so much, it'll still be bastard. It'll not be Jory. Right. From now on, Jody John. You can see the cell has a decent size, not quite four inches long. The bottom of the minute's inch and a quarter, it'll probably clean up an inch and a half. A couple of little bosses on, them two bosses are for cylinder drain valves, and there's a one there for the exhaust port. Nice clean finish where the, where, the, where the core was, but it is very rough. I think it'll be, well, there's no sand in there, but it, it is a rough finish. Uh, the, the, core, the core didn't crush quite as quite as well as I expected. Um, I've thought I want it too large, and the next time I'm going to try using less sodium silicate and mixing some ancient sugar, I already believe, in with the sand to help it, to help it collapse when, it, when it's cast. What will sometimes happen if the core is too hard? When this contracts, it actually it can't crush the core, and you can actually split and tear the tear the cast. And there's nothing, nothing happened on this one. This this cast is pretty good. Now the first thing I'll do, I'll machine that face flat, mill that flat, fly cut it flat. Then at least you've got one one flat face to start to start with. At the minute the casting does, there's no there's nothing there's nothing flat. Everything's tapered because all the patterns are tapered. That's what they call draft on. So it so it comes out of the mould. Like I said, the first thing to do will be to machine this face here flat. I'll probably mount it on the, on the layer saddle and do the cylinder bore and then machine that face at the same setting. So I've got that face, the cylinder bore, and that face, the port face, will all be parallel to each other. I could mount the cylinder in a 4 jaw chuck and bore it with a boring tool in that way. Problem is, you get a bit, a bit spring, a bit flex on the boring tool. Plus uh, any slight deviation, the head stop not being in line with the bed and the ball will be taper. Probably the best way to bore it would be to put a boring bar in between centres and mount the cylinder on the layer saddle like that. And I can bore it and I can fly cut that face all in one go. I've made a bigger engine and that, that's how I bored the cylinder on that one and I got an excellent finish. I'll have to make a boring bar. Which I think is what we're going to do tonight. I've invested in, a, in a, like a new tool, a bit of wood to go on there. See if damage in the bed if you drop a chuck, if you hack on. Four jaw chuck's got to come off. This shouldn't be too tight. It's not. If it's really tight, you put, put a bit of square, square bar in there, big spanner. Use the lock. Need a three jaw chuck on. You must make sure the register's clean. The hole in the chuck's clean where it goes on. I'll just put a little drop of oil on, won't do any harm. It's ordinary, ordinary car engine oil. chug on, just tighten it by hand, it doesn't take much, it's going to tighten anyways I'm machining. I've got a bit of bar here I'm going to use to make a boring bar with, I'm not sure what sort of steel it is. Try it with a fail, it fails alright. Next thing's a magnet, sticks on magnet so it's not stainless, or at least it's not a common grade of stainless. Uh, a nice bright finish, probably just bright bar. When somebody says do you want to put some steel bar for nothing, you don't ask what sort of bar it is, you just take it and you, you machine or you can't machine it. This layer's got a three-quarter inch hole, throw the spindle, the bars just 
it's too, the ball's pointy, it's too big. So I'll have to, uh, what I need to do, I need to centre both ends of the ball. So I'll have to use the fixed steady to support it while I drill it and centre it. Then I'll be going to drill a pool through it for a cutter, a couple of grub screws. The cutters I tend to use are uh, broken quarter milling cutters. I've got loads of them, well not loads, but I have broke one or two. Uh, the, the ideal. The shanks are excellent material. You can grind them up yourself. Uh, never, never throw away broken milling cutters or good quality drills or tools. You can always make something with them. This is a fixed steady. You often find them in a the cupboard at the end of a lathe, rusting away along with a four jaw chuck. Which is a shame because they're a very handy tool. Locks onto the bed. And if I was to put that on the chuck, tighten the chuck up and try and machine the end of that to lock the steady on, the bar would whip, it wouldn't work. It does exactly what it says, it's a fixed steady. It's fixed to the lathe and it steadies a workpiece. I have a travelling steady that I made. There's loads of different lubricants. These to use white lead and graphite, all kinds of horrible nasty things. A little bit of wheel bearing grease is all I use. It's got three fingers, the fingers are adjustable. They've got to be holding the workpiece so it doesn't rattle about, but not, not that tight that it starts to smoke. It gets hot. When you adjust them, you get a feel for it. You can hear it, you get the load start to go onto it. You want it gripping, but not too tight. As it's running, a little screw of the oil. All I want to do is face the end of the bar and put a centre drill in. So it won't be running that long, it won't be running very fast, it doesn't need to be. I can feel it gripping there, and there's no movement, that'll do for what I need. That's a tool I'm going to use to face the end of the bar. It's a right hard knife tool, a tip tool. This tool does probably 90% of all machining work. You can face things with it, you can turn things down with it. What a quick change tool post. The tool is on centre height because I use it all the time, it stops in that, to in that tool holder. See, I've got, the, I've got the compound slide set at an angle, set at 45 degrees. It just means that everything's in nice and close and tight, uh, so there's as little overhang as possible. Lock the carriage off so the carriage won't move. Get the other turn by hand, make sure nothing's going to fall, nothing's going to catch. Set it away. I'll just face this by hand. The tool's dead on centre height, it's leaving no clip at all. Whatever sort of steel it is, the machine's quite nice. Put a taper on the end. Just by hand. Just rock around and smooth it off.
Right, next thing, centre drill. Nice decent size one. Once again, not if you break a centre drill, when you break a centre drill, keep the broken bit of drill. They make good tools. A little bit of oil helps it cut. This is just like machine oil, like hydraulic oil. Try me centre in, that's nice. Okay, we'll turn it round, do that in. So now we're steady set up, just in case I loosen off the clamp bolt. Out the road. And take the job on the chuck. Very slightly warm, possibly a bit, a little bit too tight, but it's only running, you know, a minute or two just to just to get the end of ball prepped. Turn it around. The same thing. A bit of bearing grease. Clamp that down, make sure you can turn it. Once again, right hand knife tool. I would definitely recommend these quick change tool posts. This is just a cheap Chinese one. Uh, I made, I've made my own tool rollers for them. Uh, great, excellent bit of kit. Again, the carriage is locked. Stamp on the end. Looks better. You would put your fingers. Also means if you drop it, it doesn't damage the end of the shaft. Feed it in nice, nice even pressure. Turn the lubricant, keep backing it off. I've got water on the lid, but it's not worth it's not worth setting away just to just for these. That's a scent. That's a scent that I'll be using. In nice and deep, nice and strong. What I can do, I've got the bar and the chuck, and I've got a centre in. I put my clock gauge on, 
I'll zero it, we can wind the carriage along it's the same at both ends and it's a thou and a half this way in the centre possibly the bar's got a slight bend in but it goes to show that the, the tailstock centre is fairly well lined up with the headstock of the lathe I think if I was to put a centre in there instead of the chuck it'll be, in fact I'll, I'll do it just to it let's have a look it'll be very accurate then I've got a centre, we'll try centre on this end and the headstock end centre in there put my bar in between centres just a gentle nip right now right to the end hope to zero half a thou, a thou back to zero there must be a slight whip in the bar running dead trill there whipping in the middle I've got a couple of vices these on the middle machine this one's reasonable it's actually a drilling machine, drilling machine vice what it has got, it's got a bit of keyway, key stock set into the base which lines up with the T slot in here uh, it means that the vice is automatically put dead square in the machine my other vice hasn't, but that, saying that I can, index, I, can, I can line the vice up and it only takes minutes to do it with a clock gauge but this one's already already done so we'll use this one what it has got, it's got a nice V shape with a jaw so it'll hold the round stock quite nicely just held on the couple of T-bolts it's a quick action, calmly well action quite a nice vice not the most accurate but for what we're doing this job it's, it's near enough so that will fit into the it'll fit into there right that and that locks into that locks into the groove now we drill our hole right we need to find the centre of the bar I'm going to go on my edge finder and chuck in I've got these keyless chucks on all my machines for what they cost, I think they're great I've shown these before, it's just a bearing on the end of a shaft dead simple Make the bearings in the centre. When it when it in, it just touches. Bearings stop turning, slow down and stop. Just touching there. Zero Y axis. And bearings 32 mm diameter. Half a 32, 16. We'll wind that in 16. That puts the centre of the spindle right on the edge of the bar. I'm not sure what size the bar is. I can measure the bar in easier way. Across to this side. Centre line again. Out this way. It just touches. Just touching. There, I'm going to read the 55.295, and you can't think, calculate that, 
55.290 divided by 2 equals 27.645. Right, so what? Twenty-six, twenty-seven point six, six four five. We'll lock my y-axis off. If you look at it, it looks like it's in the middle. If it looks like it's in the middle, chances are it will be. Zero y-axis, which means we can turn the machine off and we'll come back to it. But I have locked that. It's locked up. And it seems to take a while to do, but when you're doing it, you can do it very fast if you're not trying to act to a camera. So the tool, the tool costs absolutely nothing at all to make. I've done a video on making it and how to use it. It makes a good pushing tool for the lathe for pushing things square into a chuck. I mean, it's so simple. It's not my idea. It's an idea I found on YouTube. You can use the back of a tool in the lathe for pushing things square, but that works well. I've got a brand new quarter inch drill here. It actually measures in a thousand and a half under a quarter and I'm going to be using blunt centre drills, broken centre drills as cutting tools and that actually measures half a thou over. I'll put a quarter inch drill This bar is it certainly machines nice. That's a good fit, nice fit. Could be a little bit tight, but it's going to have two grub screws holding it anyway, so it, uh, I don't think it'll give a problem. I haven't got a ream on, I haven't got a drill the right size, so. Gonna have to do. Use the Z axis for drilling. Smooth feed with it. It's not going to snatch. Pretty good. Need to get the get that hole horizontal so you got two holes up. All I'll do, I'll just eyeball it so it's square. It's pretty good. You can eyeball things very accurately, surprising. We're still, still in the centre of the bar. We're going to go 150 each side of the centre line. 150 thou each side of the centre line.
back to zero in the 150 thou it will allow you. This is where the DRU is good, it doesn't matter that the machine's got backlash, because you're not working off the dial, you're working off the DRU ahead. Right. That's a 1.4.2. So I keep the tapping drills, clearance drills all in the same box. When I'm using small drills, I like to feel in with a quill like that, and you get more feel. Back it off, then your oil. Back to zero, plus 150. Little bit of top and compound. That's just a blunt top and little top. Just to keep the keep things square. They make, they make good sense. I punch just blunt tops, never throw them away. Through the tape at top. Back to zero and a hundred and fifty thou. Put a plug top in, just to clean the threads up. Drop a top, top and compound. Nice tight threads, nice and shiny. Put the top on this little house where it lives. So I cut, I'll be going through there like that, it'll have a, a flat drum on it. I need to shorten down, cut the 5mm grub screws. Uh, the grub screws are really hard, they're just blunt hacksaws. This is where the collar chucks are ideal. You can nip it up and it won't, within reason, and it won't damage the threads. What I'll do, I'll just machine it away with a right hand knife tool, nothing elaborate.
It's a job. Shorten down a couple of couple of grub screws. One one would hold it, but two two is better. Gentlemen, great snow, bastard.